All right, welcome back to Bluebot Tech. Today, we're gonna to be going over how I did an under and over cabinet lighting install using WLED and some SK6812 LED strips. Now the SK6812 does have that extra white channel, so it, it gives you that nice white warm light that I was looking for to kind of blend with the rest of the lighting in my kitchen. Of course, it takes your under cabinet lighting from this to turn on under cabinet to this. We also did over cabinet lighting as well. We'll get some better shots of that for you. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, so to get started with our under and over cabinet lighting project, as you can see here, I have a five volt, 20 amp power supply that we'll be using to provide power to all the strips. And before I get started putting strips up and putting everything and tucking it into cabinets. I like to test everything. So as you can see, we got breadboard here, a D1 mini pre-flashed with WLED. Now we did have a video that we put out on how to do the flashing with WLED. It's quite simple. So if you don't know how to do that, we'll provide that in the description below. Now do the distances that my uh, cabling is going to be covering. We're going to be using a logic level shifter. Now, as you can see, it's got high voltage on the top. That's the HV and low voltage on the bottom. We need to provide a reference to that high voltage and a ground and a reference to the low voltage and a ground. And then we can use any of the two on the far left or far right to up that data signal from 3.3 volts to five volts. So we go ahead and pop that into our breadboard and we can get started wiring everything up. So as you can see, I'm providing a five volt and common ground to the breadboard here. We need to go ahead and power our D1 mini. So we'll go five volts to the five volt pin here. And of course, we're going to provide um, wiring diagrams for everything so it's a little easier to follow along with. And I'm using red for 5 volts, black for ground, and green for data. So I go ahead and plug that common ground in here. That ground pin is right next to that 5 volt pin. Also, go ahead and provide our reference voltage to our logic level shifter here. And we'll also provide a ground to our logic level shifter. And you only need to ground it on one side, so that's all I'm doing. We also need to provide a reference 3.3 volts. So we'll use the 3.3 volt pin on the D1 mini to do that. Plug that in right there. And now we need to bring our data line in. So just since it's easier to reach, I'm gonna use that low volt four pin and our data pin is right here next to ground. Plug that in. So it goes in as 3.3 volts and then we will bring it out and that data line will be stepped up to five volts. So we can go ahead and plug this data line into our SK6812s. That's what I'm using for this project. I chose this because this is a warm white plus the RGB and it separates those. So it should provide a little nicer lighting. So we'll go green to green. There's a nice long wire here. So come in ground. We'll go black to white since that's what the strip's using. And then our five volts to the strip. And red to red. All right, so we'll bring that over here. Now we should be good to power everything up. Okay, as you see, now that we have power, our D1 Mini should be broadcasting our WLED AP and our lights are lit up. We can head over here and connect to that AP and see if we can get colors to change now, just to make sure everything's working correctly. Okay, so we'll go green. That works. Blue and red. All right, so it looks like we're all set up here. Again, I like to test before I put everything into a permanent place. We're gonna go ahead and tear this apart and package everything up a little neater. Okay, so as you can see, we're looking up under the cabinets here. Now we have to measure to make sure we uh, cut that aluminum channel to the right length. So I got my tape measure here. We we'll simply reach up under here and it looks like we got about 28 and a quarter, 28 and a half from side to side, but I'm gonna make sure to leave a little bit of space from end to end because I'm gonna make room for wire to come in one side and go out the other side. Okay, so let's write that down and let's go measure all the other cabinets. All right, so here we are in the garage. We're getting ready to cut our aluminum channels. As you can see, I have these aluminum channels I picked up off of Amazon. It's uh, about six and a half feet or two meters. It comes with 10 of those. 
and it was around 56 bucks, so not too bad. Um, it also comes with the plastic diffuser, which should give us that nice soft light on the countertop and kind of prevent any reflections. It also comes with three bags of hardware. We have some anchors and screws, uh, some plastic spacers, and then these little metal clips that'll hold everything up under the cabinet. We'll show you how those work once we get inside. We're also gonna need something to mark our aluminum with. We've got a tape measure for measuring. And today I'm using this Dremel Sawmax. I find it just a little bit easier with a metal blade. It makes really nice cuts in the aluminum. So let's get started. Okay, so as you can see, after we've uh, finished cutting our aluminum channels to the right length, this is one of our longer ones, but what we're doing is we cut the LED strips to the then proper length. You know, I'm saving myself a little bit of space here on the ends. As you can see, just so I can then solder these leads on, this will kind of make a, a little bit of a, a quick disconnect for me so that if for some reason I ever have to change it out if a strip goes bad or a pixel goes bad I can simply disconnect it pull it down make a new one and put it back up all right so as you can see fairly even on both sides and then it'll give me just enough room to get these leads soldered on. And then also put those wires through those end caps. All right, so that's pretty easy. What we'll do is we'll start soldering some more of these leads on and closing these up so we can get them up under the cabinets. Okay, now as you can see, I've begun installing the strips. So I have most of the under cabinet lighting done, but not the over cabinet. We're gonna show you how all that's installed. It's a little easier for me to film. But here you can see we have our power supply. We drilled some holes for the wires to go through into the adjacent cabinet. As you can see, and then we run that down through the cabinet. Come out right here. As you can see, there are those kind of quick disconnectors I've made, and we have the lights mounted up underneath. The wires then go back up into the cabinet. We have a wire running across right here. Keep everything nice and hidden. Goes down through this other cabinet. Comes out, connects here, and as you can see, that wire runs up under there. And then as you can see, to pass it through cabinets between them, I've drilled holes in between there, and the wire simply runs in between quick disconnectors to keep everything up out of the way. We use a little bit of hot glue. All right, so let's transition over to the above cabinet. It'll be a little easier for me to film while we're installing. We have our LED strips all ready to go. Now I'm gonna be doing these a little bit differently. As you can see, I'm not using the quick disconnectors. I'm just gonna simply solder those on up top. So I've got the correct ends ready to go. Got all the diffusers cut. Let's get going. Okay, so to get a wire up for the upper cabinet lighting, I'm gonna run a wire from here up through the top. And we should poke out right up here. As you can see, I got my drill ready to go. Sorry for the, the shaky cam. All right, we'll drill a hole right through here. Okay, and that 
should give us just enough space to then get our wire through. All right, we'll wanna make sure to pull enough wire through so that we have room to connect everything. And that should be good enough. All right, so what we're gonna do next is run a wire down along the length of these cabinets so that we can get to the end of this track and solder that on. Okay, so I wanted to quickly go over how the mounting hardware works. As you can see, you simply screw that bracket down. Now I had to get some shorter screws because up under the cabinets, the screws provided with the channels actually went all the way through the cabinets. So I had to pick up some shorter screws but once you get these secured, you simply take the strip, rock it into position, and then it clips in. And as you can see, it fits right in that little channel there. All right, that simple. All right, so now that we got everything mounted up, I wanna quickly go over how you install the diffuser plastics. So as you can see, you simply lay that down on top. started in that track and then you simply squeeze it the whole length of the track and it should clip right in. All right and then that should give us as you can see up on the ceiling a nice soft glow you don't see any individual pixel so that's a good thing. Okay, I just wanted to quickly kind of go over how I went about hiding the wires to get across to the cabinet on the other side of my sink. Okay, so as you can see, I wrapped these in white electrical tape leading up onto the top of this piece of trim. And then I heat shrunk the wires behind here and then use this white electrical tape to kind of hide it. And I'll give you a shot once I get down off the counter here. I left a piece of tape off, so as you can see here, I'm not quite done, but this is how I'm going about hiding the wires. And then, here, let me hop down and we'll show you what it looks like from the ground. Okay, I've hopped off the countertop and now as you can see, that wire and even the white electrical tape is pretty hidden. So unless you're like 18 feet tall, you're probably not gonna see it. And I kind of wrap those white wires because I have some stairs that lead up out of my kitchen. So if you're standing on the stairs, it just kind of helps those wires blend in a little bit. enjoyed this one. I know this is one of my favorite projects so far and in fact probably one of my wife's favorite projects. Of course it just changes the entire aesthetic of the kitchen. Now since we're using those SK6812s you can have anywhere from that warm kind of easy on your eyes white light or if you want and you need to really see what you're doing at the countertop you can crank up the full RGB spectrum and get that super white light. Of course as you can see we have the rainbow wave going behind me so since we're using WLED and RGB strips. You can really get anything going in here you want and really set the mood for any type of vacation. All right, I really hope this inspired some of you. I hope some of the kind of wire hiding tips and techniques that I showed in here help some of you out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.